society was talking about trying to get We were talking about the music and so on. We accept that other people will talk with them. Everybody does. That's the whole world. Everybody does it. Everybody does. You do it automatically. You do it automatically. You got a you got a music called rock and roll. Where did it come from? What does it mean, rock and roll? What is this rock and roll? Where does this rock and roll come from? Uh, do you have do you have a level on this thing? Do you have a level on this thing? Yeah. Do you have a red line on it that you can't go any louder than a certain way? You okay? That's okay. Okay. Yep. You're fine. Okay. Uh, how loud can I go with this? That's where rock and roll comes from. Now you go on a cheer and you sing on the cheer. Someone hears that. They come in and they're going, ah, ah, and they stay in prison 10 or 15 years. And when they're leaving, they're going, ah, ah, and you see it? In other words, you got your majesty upside down and music comes from the crown. Music comes from your king. Music comes from your Lord. Music comes from your soul. Hollywood plays music to little girls. I don't play little girl music. I play music for God. I play music for myself. Then when I come up with a song and they change the words, I say, don't change the words. If you change the words, my shadows are running fast, man. I'm running out of the monkshood. I'm running out of Boys Town, Father Flanagan's Nebraska. I'm running out of at Irish Catholic Church, man. I'm running out of, you see what I'm saying? In other words, I'm running, I'm running from IRA. I'm running out of everyone that wants to live on the planet Earth, man. I'm running from nowhere and doing nothing. I'm all the same. It's just for such as it goes on and on. And Shakespeare was a clown. Uh, he changed it for his little girls, for his money. He compromised himself for money. Crime, you don't compromise yourself for money. You got a poker game. If you can't win, you take your pistol and take the money. You play, and then when you see that you can't win, you just take it. You pull your claymore out, man, and you do what any black pirate does, man. You you take everything on the board, and you go from another direction. You know. Okay. No, no, no. You know the reason they put that on there? Because uh, no, no. This is very intricate, man. The black hand that comes from the Catholic Church, the Romans have been using for years. Uh, the black hand is the, supposedly the hand of God from the cross that's really upside down and comes from the Negroes and the slaves that Abraham Lincoln played with. I've been talking to other people in the United States. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. You like that? Uh, yeah, it's all right. I used to uh, play around with his daughters. Uh, that's Frank Costello, uh, Abbott Lou Costello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know those people. Yeah. Uh, I remember you very well. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, uh, you know, I get around. Uh, I know, you know, that's my neighborhood, you know. Like, uh, Jimi Hendrix lived, what, three doors from Dennis, and Elvis lived uh, two blocks, you know. So, that's just like going looking in somebody else's icebox. But you see, here's the thing, man. Like me in particular, I'm not, uh, you know, like uh, I'm not impressed very easily by very much. You know, I'm impressed by my counselor and associate warden to see if I can get to uh, uh, <laughs> get to a guitar. Huh? No, no, I didn't. I didn't. We didn't. Uh, we weren't. His divorce court was. Uh, that's another thing you got to realize. See, everything here is upside down. Everything that you do goes off to someone else. The real Humphrey Bogart and the real James Cagney w was not uh, really criminals. The real criminals died somewhere in San Quentin and Folsom, and the actors took them off, what we call take it off. You take it off and play it. You hear somebody sing something, you hear somebody say something, you say, that's cool. Uh, right on uh, the underworld, the slang that comes from uh, down under, the kangaroo, the bottles and stoppers with the ones and twos to the plates of meat for the jiggles and jars and the hammers and tack in the back. In America, you can't get rock and roll over into the American consciousness unless you go to England. 
because they got a lock on it from, uh, from Nashville. They got a lock on it from James Brown, from the chain gang. They got a lock on it from the prison because the prison is a big percentage of prison is run by black inmates. It's run by the fear of black inmates. Fear has a big thing to do with music. Who holds the fear holds the sound. Who holds the who holds like the, the mules uh, get on one side of the mountain and go, oh, 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 and the mules get on the other side and go, oh, oh, and the loudest mule, all the jennies go to the mule that sings the best. It's the same thing with the music. The music has big controls that come out of Boston. They come off the Dukakis campaign. That comes off of John F. Kennedy. That comes off of Castro. That's a play on the blue eyes. That's a play on the uh, uh, Spanish court. Uh, yeah, I had all that. I'm a gangster. Yeah, yeah I'm, a, I'm a crook. Yeah, Bobby's very good. He's a genius. He's a young genius. I was really impressed by that youngster. He really could get down. See, getting down with music is not the same thing as, as playing music out front for the people. Getting down with music is going in the mountains and throwing up a, a fire and getting the drums and getting down. That's, you know, that's really getting funky, man. It's, no, we live all the time. Music, 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 music. It was called the Family Jams. It was a, it was a band, Family Jams. We played at the Corral. We played old, old country like music, old, old fashioned uh, uh, Lefty Frizzell music, uh, Hank Williams music, old Rinky Tink. Uh, well, we got into the spiritual perspective and with the Indian sweat lodges and the peace pipes and the powder and the mushrooms. I got some mushrooms from some Azteca, uh, uh, he's like the Lord. He's a big Azteca chief. He's, uh, he's, uh, he lives, uh, in the roots and herbs of life, man. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's a mighty warrior. Man. He's a big, he's a big person. In the underworld, I live in the underworld, man. You know, and there's a lot of characters in the underworld that would be fantasy to you, but they are really real on other levels. You know, like you go out in the desert and uh, you get into the mushrooms or the peyote or the sun dance. Uh, the sun dance is another place that the music comes from. Are you aware of the sun dance? I think you are. You should be. You made a movie about it. The guy called Horse. I think the name of the movie. Well, there's a reality in that sun dance that brings out. All the music in you, you know, in other words, it brings out the cross. It brings out all the suffering. It brings out all the, the, uh, the majesty in one's soul. What are the babies? Kids. Little kids. Yeah, they were little kids. I want to hold your hand. You know, yeah, well, they still want to hold my hand. You know, so they, don't they get older. We get older, you know, I mean, uh, but they're just kids as far as I'm concerned. McCartney or whatever his name is, don't know what he's doing. He's up there making music with people that's creating babies all across the country that uh, he's the father of all kinds of things that he doesn't even have any brains to realize. You know, you don't lay with that uh, snake or the snake is going to eat you sooner or later. You know, then you look down the street and you wonder why <laughs> you wonder why your children are all wondering, you know, it's all kinds of different ways and things of doing all kinds of stuff. Huh? Helter Skelter was uh, their, their song. They wrote it. You know, it didn't have no, no particular meaning to me. The disc attorney picked up on that and made it into his uh, Made into his trip. You know. <laughs> uh, well, uh, you got to realize the convict's mind. Uh, 1944, uh, music's going, well, you have God's battle, battle, boom, da, 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 da. people are walking on that level. And they're saying, yeah, we're going to get it. And you get locked up. You get back out in 1950, and they're singing, they try to tell us we're too young, too, too, and they're walking a little faster. And then you get locked back up, and boom, it stops again. You get out in 59, and you stop going, stop, 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 stay long, stay long, that will be saying, wow, man, these people are really, you know. And then you get locked back up, and everything stops. 
I get back out in 67, you go over to see the great was dead, and they're Come, show him, come around, I'm like, 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 they were playing to those teeny boppers. Son, I'm not a teeny bopper. They, uh, they, I like their music. Their music was okay, but my music is, uh, uh, my music, I'll tell you where my music goes. Uh, it goes um, riff. Royal Air Force. Uh, don't set on the apple tree with anyone else but me. I mean, that's where I'm at. You know, in other words, like, uh, I'm still in the bagpipe. You know, I haven't lost the perspective to that, you know. Oh, come on, man. Music gives everyone messages. That's what music does. I mean, how do I have to be, appear like I'm some kind of maniac because uh, I can hear something that the music says? You know, when the music said, song, way over the rainbow, you know, in other words, yeah, I'm still there over the rainbow. And uh, what's that? Kate Smith came out with that. Uh, There'll be bluebirds over the white cliffs of Dover. I'm still in Dover. I mean, I haven't been. You know. I mean. If I could get to somewhere where I could where I could write, or I could have a tape recorder, then I could explain a lot of this. It's very difficult to explain 10 or 15 years in two or three minutes. The reality of words only say so much. The reality of motion that moves in prison moves on life and death, on what they call a line, a main line. That reality comes from handball courts and uh, weightlifting piles, and it comes from someone dropping weight on somebody else's head, of somebody owing something, of a blood family debt, that uh, the way it burns back and forwards to where if Watson has got something he can't face and I go face his death for him, then he owes me back. And then the Frenchman takes his foils and goes off into the battle for me and I owe him one heart. So then I come back to Watson and I say, you pay uh, the Frenchman what you owe me. He said, how do I pay it? I said, don't ask me how I'm not your father. Do what you're told. Pay your debt or get off my road. So he pays what he has to pay and he does what he has to do. I didn't direct him to do anything. I told him to be a man, stand up for himself. I didn't tell him what he should do or how he should do whatever he had to do. I said he has to do what he has to do. Wilson knows that. Claymore knows that. The street knows that. The penitentiary knows that. And the brotherhood knows that. What are you saying? I never directed traffic on the, on no street corner about anything, man. I haven't got time for that. I'm not going to get involved. I'm not that what insane. I, do I? You know, I'm crazy, but I'm not. You know, I mean, I can, but I. You know, I'm not going to take a chance on putting myself back to jail for what? For what? You know, you deal me the hand. I got to play it. You give me the cards. I'm a mass murderer. I'm a hippie cult leader. I'm all these things the DA's laying out so he can bring the mafia from New York, so he can put Rambo in the movies. You see what I'm saying? In other words, he's got a lot more going than Helter Skelter. Helter Skelter is just one little foot he's playing. Now he comes back to me from Geneva, wants to be my sunshine. If I if I'll agree with him on his Helter Skelter theory, I didn't have any Helter Skelter in my mind. Let me explain something. The oven has SS written on it. I come out of the bakery, 1954. I'm Duke on the yard. Uh, there's nobody on yard who beat me doing nothing. They got one or two uh, German kids that come from the Second World War that were raised in the Hitler Youth Movement that are very good, but they can't beat me. Uh, I rule the cigarette. I mean, that's, you know, the dominoes, the checker games, you dig? So someone's got to be killed. Somebody told somebody some lies and somebody's going to kill somebody. So I come out of the bakery pushing the broom. And they got this guy in the butcher shop, and they're stabbing him to death. I'm walking a line. I'm not a snitch. 
I don't run and tell the cops tales. I stand on my own two feet. So one of them looks over and says, Masson, get on the point. So I take the broom and I get on the point. And I'm watching and I'm thinking, that tramp better not move from me. If he moves from me, I'm going to take him home to his mama. You dig? So he doesn't move to me and I don't move to him. So they got this guy and they stabbed him to death. And you can't kill anyone in the kitchen in a penitentiary because it makes it bad for the food. It's bad for everyone. It creates a lot of paranoia. So they're cutting this guy in half. They're trying to put him in the garbage can. They can't get him in the garbage can. So they cut him in half and bent him, and they got the elevator, and they're smashing the elevator down, trying to put him in the can. He's got half in one can and half in the other can, and they're trying to smuggle him out of the kitchen. And they smuggle him out of the kitchen, and I'm pushing the floor. The guy come up and says, what happened? I said, what happened where? He said, what did you see? I said, see what? Where? What are you talking about? I don't see nothing. Dude. All my life, I've been on that line. I don't, I don't ever see anything. I know nothing. I know nothing. I'm zero. I don't get involved. I don't run and tell them cops protect me. I protect myself. And whatever happens, happens, man. People getting killed around me is no new thing. You come to prison, man, there's people getting killed in prison all the time. You go to San Quentin, these men, every time they walk the yard, they got to they gotta wear, uh, you got your, no, yeah, look, he's got to wear, he got to wear shields, man. In other words, you got all kinds of violence and fear that runs in these places. When you live a life like that, it becomes a natural thing, you know. You didn't do the other things for those people. No, no, not at all. I'll tell you what it was. Terry Milsher come up to the ranch and made some promises to a lot of people he didn't keep. It had nothing to do with me. He gave me $50. I gave it to the old blind German. The old blind Germans got $53. The same thing the Emperor of Japan, when he came back from... Uh, when he came back from the crypt, he had 53 uh, 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 samurais there with him. You know, in other words, like when you come back from the graveyard, uh, they're picking that back up. This justice system that they got here is not is not doing anything. You know. Okay. Tex Tex is a rumpkin. He came to town. He's his mama's boy. The prostitute took his money. He said, he said, can I live with you? I said, can you live with me? He said, yeah. I said, well, let me have that pickup truck. So he gave me an old pickup truck from Texas, you dig? So I got this old pickup truck, and uh, I'm letting him stay around the ranch. He's hanging around the ranch. A lot of guys like to hang around me because I'm underground. I'm what you call cool. I'm what everybody tries to be. When I'm down on the street, I ride a motorcycle. I got a lot of girls. I sing a lot of music. I play. I'm him. I mean, I, you know, that's my road. I, I, you know, for a while until they grab me up and put me back in the cage again. But anyway, uh, uh, he said uh, this woman took my money, and he sees women right lighting my cigarettes, and he's saying, "Yes, ma'am, open the door for you." And there was he's a matriarch. I'm a patriarch. He sees the way I'm doing it. He wants to do what I'm doing, so he said he's going to go get his money back. So he went to go get his money back. And he went and he burnt the broad for five grand. He beat her for five grand. Some black guy called me and said, I'm Gangster Dan over here, man. You took my money. I said, look, uh, Gangster Man, I, you know, I don't, you know, I, every, all you, all you white brothers sort of together. We'll go up coming up there. I'm going to burn everybody up and take that ranch. I said, no, you're not, not around me. You're not. You talk that shit to them little girls. When you come to me, boy, you don't have to, you know, because like, I'll take your hat home to you. You dig? So we go through some changes, and I told Tex, go down there and face that man. Don't drag your shit to my door, man. He said, I can't. He'll kill me. He'll kill me. I said, well, if you're crazy, or, I mean, if you're scared, run home to mother. You dig? So he couldn't do it. So I had to go down there, and I ended up shooting the guy. And I had to go through some other changes with some other people and cutting some other people up. Yeah, that's the, the world I live in. I ride in a motorcycle group that's a, a bunch of crazy people. We're fighting and cutting each other all the time. That's a big thing. You know, but I'm always smart enough to get away without killing someone because I don't want to go to that gas chamber. I'm not going to kill nobody. I, if I can get away, I'm going to wiggle. I'm going to jiggle and, and get up on that line and push that broom and get on down. I didn't see anything. You know, in other words, I'm not going to get involved. I went, no, I went actually for myself, but it was for Tex too, uh, because Tex ain't going to have no woman. You dig? This black guy keeps taking his woman away from him. So I had to go get his woman back for him. You dig? Because he won't accept that he's his own woman. You dig? We're all the Queen of England. If we're the King of France, I mean, whatever that means, you know. So what happened to Huh? What happened to Uh, 
uh, Gary uh, sold some dope to some bad people. He sold some drugs that caused uh, uh, Beausoleil's wife to lose her baby. He was an informant for the government. He was playing all kinds of uh, treacherous games that he shouldn't have been playing. See, when you're in the underworld, you got to be truthful. If you lie and you're faking and you're snitching and it catches up with you, it bites you. You do it to yourself. I didn't think one way or another. It wasn't up to me to kill him. You dig what I'm saying? Here's the way that came down. Kid come to me and says, Hinman owes me. I said, okay, what do you want me to do? He said, you're my brother, right? I said, yeah, that's right. He said, what do I do? I said, well, if you're big enough, go get your money. If you're not, sit down and keep quiet. He said, what would you do? I said, money, man. It's not worth the trouble. You dig? Let's go party, you know? I mean, what do we need money for? You know, we make it. We print it up. You know, it's got our faces on it. You know, I mean, you know. Uh, so, uh, Wait a minute, I'll explain it to you. I'll explain it to you. I, I said, uh, he said, uh, uh, all right, I'm big enough. I'm going to go get it. I said, okay, that's what you want. So he called me a couple of days later. He said, man, this guy's got a gun. I said, don't invoke me to no violence, man. I just got out of the penitentiary. I don't want to go back. He said, you said you were my brother. And, and he said, what do I do? He's got a gun. I said, well, if he's got a gun, he's a coward. He must be afraid or he wouldn't have a gun, you know. I said, you don't need a gun, man. I said, uh, don't reach for the gun. If you reach for the gun, he'll shoot you because you're putting his mind on the gun. Smack him in the mouth first. Put his mind on his mouth, then grab the gun. Oh, you're crazy. I said, no, I'm not crazy. It's just a matter of dealing with yourself because there's nobody there but you. You know, go take the gun or each will show me. So I said, don't, you know, so I got involved. So here I go. Bruce. McGregor, Davis, and I go over to Henry's house. Uh, I got a knife on my leg. So I cut Henry's ear and I take the gun. He shoots off on the wall and I throw the gun one way and I throw the knife the other way. And I give the kid the, the knife and I say, that's how you do it. Don't bring me into another no more. Don't bring me into no violence. Then I'm thinking, I got to scare this character. So I am what they call in the underworld. I'm a bad actor. I say, all right, now I got to kill you, Henry. He said, oh, don't kill me. I said, if I don't kill you, you're going to tell my parole officer. He's going to put me back in prison. He said, no, I won't, I won't tell. I said, you give me your word as your bond and your bond as your life. You won't tell. He said, I give you my word as my bond. And I, and I look back at the Frenchman and I, the Frenchman's standing there with a the knife and the gun's laying over on the table in Norway. I think the king of Norway's got the gun. So the North Sea's dying, right? So uh, all them Walders, we were Walders since what, in the 60s? 60s, yeah. So uh, uh, I looked at, the, at the, the Frenchman with the knife and he's got, he's got Henman. And I said, uh, you got this? He gave me his word as his bond. Have you got this life here? And he said, yeah. I said, are we in the truth here? And he said, yes, we're in the truth. I said, okay. Uh, uh, I'm through with this. I'm gone out of this. And I left. Uh, we passed his ear up. We put some scotch tape on his ear. We fixed him up. He's back on the road. No problem. I'm out of there, man. I straightened it out. I got paid. I said, pay the kid what you owe him. He paid him the money. Uh, they transferred the cars and made their deals. You dig what I'm saying? All I was was the administrator there. I administrated justice to those kids, dig, with what it amounted to. So then Hinman got, well, he got the knife. Oh, no, he got the gun. From He got the gun. He said, I'm going to go kill that. So the little brother. And he said, well, and Bobby said, no, I can't let you do that. He said, you gave your word. And he said, well, that don't mean nothing to me. You know, he said, he cut my ear. I'm going to go blah, blah, blah. And Bobby said, no, I can't let you do that because he was standing up for me. Now I'm standing in his place. In other words, I was standing in his place. That's that line I'm trying to explain to you. When you walk that line and you're in truth with that cross and that chapel and that Bible and that book with that crown and that Whatever it is that you guys are, you know, all the way back to where it started with Claymore and Wilson and all them dudes and all them graveyards and all them people that went through all them changes. 
All I'm doing is walking on the end of you guys. I'm way down here at the end of your foot. I'm walking. I'm running like a little rabbit, in, in, you know. No, so Hinman killed Hinman. That's the way it comes down to. If you look at it from, if you, uh, no, wait a minute, no, no, it come, it come like this. Uh, uh, Hinman says uh, he pushed by, he pushed by Bobby, and Bobby handed him the knife, a Mexican silver knife with a big eagle on, it from that medicine man that smokes that, uh, smokes that stuff that's got the mushrooms around his neck that comes from the sweat lodge, that comes from the man, that comes from the universe, that comes from God with this knife and that heart, you dig? And he says, I'll not let you harm him because he was standing in my place and he's my brother. You, you, you know Bogus? You know Bogus down in Hollywood? He'll witness to that with his life because he owes me one on that. You see what I'm saying? In other words, I've got more lives on this road than mine. In other words, there's only one life, true. True enough, but there's many perspectives towards that life. So when he pushed by, he gave the knife to Hinman and told him to kill me. And Hinman says, I don't want you. Boo. Bobby said, you gave your word as your bond, and your bond is your life. If you make one more move towards it, I'm taking you away. And he made the move. Bobby took him, and he died. I want to say this to every man that has a mind, to all the intelligent life forms that exist on this planet Earth. I wish the British say this to the Scottish Rites and the Masons and all the people with minds who have degrees of knowledge and who are aware of courts, laws, United Nations, governments. In the 40s, we had a war and all of our economies went towards this war effort. The war ended on one level, but we wouldn't let it end on the other level. We kept buying and selling this war. I'm not locked in a penitentiary for the crimes. I'm locked in the Second World War. I'm locked in the Second World War with this decision to bring to the world court. There must be a one world court or we're all going to be devoured by crime. Crime and the definition of crime comes from Nuremberg when the judges decided that they wanted to call Second World War a crime. Honor and war is not a crime. Crime is bad. When you go to war and you're a soldier and you fight for your God and your country, that's not criminal. That's honorable. That's what you must do to be a man. If you don't fight for your God and your country, you're not worth anything. If you have no honor, then you're not worth it. That is the truth here. And he said, yes, we're in the truth. I said, okay, uh, uh, I'm through with this. I'm gone out of this. And I left. Uh, we passed his ear up. We put some scotch tape on his ear. We fixed him up. He's back on the road. No problem. I'm out of there, man. I straightened it out. I got paid. I said, pay the kid what you owe him. He paid him the money. Uh, they transferred the cars and made their deals. You dig what I'm saying? All I was was the administrator there. I administrated justice to those kids, Dick, with what it amounted to. So then him got well, he got the knife. Oh, no, he got the gun. From He got the gun. He said, I'm going to go kill that. So the little brother. And he said, well, and Bobby said, no, I can't let you do that. He said, you gave your word. And he said, well, no, that don't mean nothing to me. You know, he said, he cut my ear. I'm going to go blah, blah, blah. And Bobby said, no, I can't let you do that because he was standing up for me. Now I'm standing in his place. In other words, I was standing in his place. That's that line I'm trying to explain to you. Today. When you walk that line and you're in truth with that cross and that chapel and that Bible and that book with that crown and that 
whatever it is that you guys are, you know, all the way back to where it started with Claymore and Wilson and all them dudes and all them graveyards and all them people that went through all them changes. All I'm doing is walking on the end of you guys. I'm way down here on the end of your foot. I'm walking. I'm running like a little rabbit, in, in, you know. No, so Hinman killed Hinman. That's the way it comes down to. If you look at it from, if you, uh, no, wait a minute, no, no, it come, it come like this. Uh, uh, Hinman says uh, he pushed by, he pushed by Bobby, and Bobby handed him the knife, a Mexican silver knife with a big eagle on, it from that medicine man that smokes that, uh, smokes that stuff that's got the mushrooms around his neck that comes from the sweat lodge, that comes from the man, that comes from the universe, that comes from God with this knife and that heart, you dig? And he says, I'll not let you harm him because he was standing in my place and he's my brother. You, you, you know Bogus? You know Bogus down in Hollywood? He'll witness to that with his life because he owes me one on that. You see what I'm saying? In other words, I got more lives on this road than mine. In other words, there's only one life, true. True enough, but there's many perspectives towards that life. So when he pushed by, he gave the knife to Hinman and told him to kill me. And Hinman says, I don't want you. Boo. Bobby said, you gave your word as your bond, and your bond is your life. If you make one more move towards it, I'm taking you away. And he made the move. Bobby took him, and he died. I want to say this to every man that has a mind, to all the intelligent life forms that exist on this planet Earth. I wish really to say this to the Scottish Rites and the Masons and all the people with minds who have degrees of knowledge and who are aware of courts, laws, United Nations, governments. In the 40s, we had a war and all of our economies went towards this war effort. The war ended on one level, but we wouldn't let it end on the other level. We kept buying and selling this war. I'm not locked in the penitentiary for the crimes. I'm locked in the Second World War. And locked in the Second World War was this decision to bring to the world court. There must be a one world court or we're all going to be devoured by crime. Crime and the definition of crime comes from Nuremberg when the judges decided that they wanted to call Second World War a crime. Honor and war is not a crime. Crime is bad. When you go to war and you're a soldier and you fight for your God and your country, that's not criminal. That's honorable. That's what you must do to be a man. If you don't fight for your God and your country, you're not worth anything. If you have no honor, then you're not worth petty. <laughs> Truth is, we've got to overturn the decision that you made in the Second World War, or the Second World War will never end. Degrees of the war was written in Switzerland, in Geneva, the conferences that were made by the men at the table clearly stated that anyone in uniform would be given the respect of their rank and their uniforms. Then when the United States won the war and got all the Germans in handcuffs, they started breaking their own rules. And they've been breaking their own rules ever since. War is not a crime, but if you judge war as a crime from a courtroom, turn around. If two and three is five, then three and two is five. You say war is a crime, and crime becomes your war. I am, by all standards, a prisoner of war. I've been a prisoner of war 
since 1944 in Juvenile Hall for setting the school building on fire in Indianapolis, Indiana. I've been locked up 45 years trying to figure out why I got